Hi pre-calc folks, I am here to show you or model for you some um, applications problems of trig graphs. And one of the things we talked about when we started this today in class was that for all for our purposes we are always going to use cosine graphs. The reason it's very often easier to use cosine is that cosine starts at the top or at the bottom if it's a negative cosine. And it's a little bit easier to tell when things are at their highest point or when things are at their lowest point than when they're right in the middle. Because sine starts right in the middle. Now why is it either sine or cosine? Well, the word sinusoidally means in that shape. It means like a sine wave which cosine and sine are both sinusoidal functions. They're both sine waves. So it's just a matter of where it starts and stops if we're looking at just one cycle or where one cycle starts. So cosine is easier to use on these. So on all of these, we're going to use cosine. So what that means is on all of these, we're going to be writing an equation in this form. Okay, where A is my amplitude, C is my phase shift, D is my vertical shift, or it takes me to the midline, and B is a number I use to find the period, or vice versa. Your period is 2 pi divided by B for a cosine. And that also means that if you need to find B, you can do 2 pi divided by the period. And this is what we'll be in the position of needing to use sometimes is to find B. All right, so let's go ahead and look. We did the Ferris wheel problem in the class, so sorry if you're watching this and you weren't in our class. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the paddle boat problem. We started this one, but it didn't quite finish it. So I'm going to look at that. <coughs> Mark Twain sat on the deck of a river paddle boat. As the paddle wheel turned, a point on the blade moved in such a way that its distance, d, from the water's surface was a sinusoidal function of time. So all that's saying is that he's watching this paddle wheel. Some point on the paddle wheel is going up and down as time passes, which makes sense. Okay, it's gonna, as the wheel turns, it goes up, it, top, it hits the top of the wheel, the wheel's turning, it starts going back down. Now, notice that I put a vertical, oh, excuse me, a horizontal line here because this is actually going to dip below the water surface. Otherwise, the paddle wheel won't turn the boat or won't propel the boat. <coughs> so, it's going to keep going up and down and dipping below the water surface. So, that's all that that part is saying. When it stopped, when his stopwatch read, read four seconds, the point was at its highest. Okay, so we're going to say after four seconds of timing, it was at its highest point. So this is going to be my highest point. And forgive all the uh, shadows and also if I mess up in terms of your visual because I'm, I'm dealing with a kind of a challenging ceiling leak that it makes it hard for me to see my board. So he said four seconds after he starts timing, it's at its highest point. So I'm going to let this be where he starts timing, zero. Okay. 16 feet above the water surface. So from here to here is 16 feet. The wheel's diameter was 18 feet. All right. Well, that means from top all the way to the bottom is 18 feet. So if this is 16 feet, then we have two feet below the surface of the water where the paddle dips underneath the water to push the boat forward. So this is negative 2. This is positive 16. Um, the wheel's diameter was 18 feet. We got that, and it completed a revolution every 10 seconds. So we know when it's at the top, and if it completes a revolution in 10 seconds, that means it goes all the way down through the water, all the way back up, and is at the top again 10 seconds later. So this must be 14 seconds after he pressed the timer. Okay, so few things we need to find here. Well, let's look at the equation we just said we were going to use. All right, we said this is what we need. 
So we're going to look at A, B, C, and D is what we're looking for. You can actually hear the water lis uh, leaking if you're listening carefully to my little ceiling roof leak, roof to ceiling to floor. Um, it's actually landing on a trash bag in a trash can, so that's what you're hearing if you hear it. So A is my amplitude. Now that's from the midline to the top or the midline to the bottom, so I need to figure out where my midline is. If this is 18 feet, that was the diameter of the whole wheel is 18 feet. If that's 18, then either 9 from the bottom or 9 from the top is where the midline would be. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is at the average, at the midpoint between negative 2 and 16. So if I average 16 and negative 2, which is 16 plus negative 2, 14, divided by 2, 7 is my middle. Now I kind of offset that a little bit because this kind of looks like it's in the middle, but I didn't have that information. I had no reason to put this right in the middle. So who knows where this is exactly. We might have to figure it out. All right, so my amplitude is half of the 18 because we have 9 units from 7 to 16 and 9 units from 7 down to negative 2. So my amplitude is 9. And let's go to phase shift next. Phase shift, we're looking at one cycle, and it's starting 4 seconds after he starts timing. So right up here, so my phase shift is 4 seconds. So it's to the right, so that's going to be minus 4. My vertical shift, remember, gets you to that midline. So the middle of it is at 7, so my vertical shift is up 7. And I know this should say cosine. Now for B, we just talked about how the period is 2 pi divided by B, but you could also use that to say B is 2 pi divided by the period. What's the period in this case? Well, they said 10 seconds later it had made a complete revolution. So the period is 10 seconds. So I'm going to take 2 pi divided by 10 seconds, and when I simplify that, I get pi over 5, and that's what will go right here. So here's my equation. So I'm ready to write that in this space. 9 cosine pi over 5 times theta minus 4 all plus 7. All right, now I'm ready to put that in my graphing calculator because the rest of what I'm asked here will go better with the graphing calculator. So on the graphing calculator, I go to y equals. To input this equation, here's what I'm going to do. Let me go to the top one. 9 cosine. I'm going to do two sets of open parentheses. I'm going to add a second set and say pi divided by 5 times theta is just my variable, so I'm going to just use an x minus 4, close parentheses. I have to close parentheses again here because this is all of this is what I'm taking the cosine of. So I'm basically telling it I open parentheses twice to say, okay, take the cosine of, there's my open parentheses that says this is the beginning of what we're taking the cosine of. These parentheses were to help me multiply and keep that pi over 5 as a separate number. So I close my parentheses twice and then put plus 7. Now I'm going to go to the graph. Now, in general, you have no idea whether your graph is going to be in a good place here or not. It may be in a horrible place. It may be where you can't see it at all. So you need to actually look at the graph you have sketched and think about what values you need to be able to see this well on the graph and calculator. Okay, my x values started at 0 and go to 14. I could go a little further than that, though, so I'm going to say... My x values, I want to go from 0 to 20. So x min, I'm going to put 0. And x max, I'm going to put 20. My y values, the lowest one is negative 2, and the highest one is 16. So I'm going to go a little bit beyond that on each side. The smallest y value, I think I'll go to negative 5. And the biggest, I think I'll go to 20. So I'm going to change my window by pressing the button that says Window. 
and inputting those numbers. So x min is 0, x max is 20. If you want to, you could really maybe do negative 2 for the x min so that you can see the y-axis, because if it's on the right on the edge of the screen, you're not going to see it. And now when I graph it, I should have a really nice graph. Okay, see how the paddle is dipping below the water each time? You can almost see it turning around as you graph it. Um, maybe I could and you couldn't, though. Let's see. All right, so they're asking me to answer some questions about what happens at various times. Now, back up here when it says, as the paddle wheel turned, it was da-da-da-da-da, it's distance from the water surface. That's really our height here, distance from the water surface, okay, was a sinusoidal function of time. So my x-axis is time. Okay, my y-axis is distance from the water surface, or you could think of it as height. Same idea, okay? So if we're looking at when is time 5 seconds, that means x is 5 seconds. Easy way to plug in x on a graphing calculator is you go second, trace, and that very first option, value, allows me to plug in whatever I want for x. When I plug in x is 5, I get 14.28. So let's go with 14.3 feet. Then it asks about when t is 17 seconds. Now one thing that might happen when you do this, well, actually, let me just show you. Mine should work, I think. Yeah, mine worked if your x values didn't go past 17. Like maybe you stopped at, what was it, 14? Maybe you stopped at 15 then it might give you an error. So you may have to enlarge your domain so that you can see x is 17. So 4.218, so 4.2. So 4.2 feet above the water surface. If I got a negative number, that would mean below the water surface. What is the first positive value of time? So what's asking me what is the value of x at which the point was at the water surface? At the water surface, Here's the water surface. So that means when y is 0. So we're looking for when is y 0 here. So I'm going to go here. And there's a reason I'm doing it this way. There are other ways to do it for this. But I'm going to graph a second line, y equals 0. And then I'm going to come back here. And I won't be able to see it because it's the x-axis. The line y equals 0 is the x-axis. But let's just assume there's a line drawn there on top of the x-axis. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out where those two graphs intersect. The graph that is the curve, the sinusoidal function, and the graph that is the horizontal line y equals 0. I'm going to use the intersect function under calc. So second, trace, intersect. Now they ask me, what's your first curve? Notice that it's flashing on the sine graph. Okay, let me just come over here real quick. I have two different things graphed. So that's what they're asking me. They're saying which one, it's kind of like, it, what if I had six equations in here? They want to make sure, or the calculator wants to make sure, it's finding the intersection of the correct two things. So that's why it says first curve, second curve. It's just saying, okay, so let me just make sure I know which two things you want the intersection of. So is this one of them? Yes. Is this one of them? Yes. So I press enter for both of those. And then for guess, let's see, it says the first positive value of time at which it was at the a water surface, that's going to be right back here. So for guess, I move it close to where I think it should go, and then I press enter, and it says x is 7.9. So it's 7.9 seconds. Now the last question it asks me here is at that time, was it going into or coming out of the water? Explain. At that time, that's going into the water, because here it is, and it's dipping down below the water surface and coming back up. So that was going into the water, because then it goes beneath the water surface, and then it turns back around. So it was before the turning point that comes back up. So that's why I know it was going into the water.